Today I'm going to show you how to make a collage in Lightroom using the print module. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure you have some photos in the tray below. You can go to the print module and you can click on collections and choose the photos out of a collection if you've made them. And if you haven't made them into a collection, just go to your library, open up a set of photos, and when they're on your screen, just hit the print module and they'll show up at the bottom um, like a little film strip. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is um, start with a, a size for your background. I like to work with inches, so you will see over here under rulers, guides, uh, grid and guides that um, I'm using ruler units and in inches. And then if I go down to the print job, I can put in my custom file dimensions. So I'm going to be working on a 12 by 8 inch um, background today. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to begin adding um, images to my background. There are two ways that you can do this. The first thing that you can do is literally just drag a photo into the background, put it where you'd like it, and size it to however you would like it and that's just pretty much an easy way. A second way you can do it is add to package and if you go over to this little area you'll find that there's drop downs with all different sizes of pictures. So I think I will add this 5x5 five five square and um, okay when it, if this happens what's happening is this original background doesn't have five inches to add this. So let's close that. Let's tell that we will add a two by two and a half. So there you go. That one popped right up, came right in there. So let's say I want to add a couple of these along the side. Well, I can hit that again and get another one and put it over there. Or I can hit the Alt key, grabbing inside of the one that's highlighted, and just pull another one down. So that's just another easy way. Once you have these boxes, all you need to do is go grab a photo and put it right in the box and it slides right in. You don't have to do anything special to put the images into um, your picture. So I'll just add a few images right there. Um, and let's just say that um, I want to add um, I'll add another cell. So let's just take a photo again and show how we can add a photo um, without having to use the cells over at the side. So I'm just going to use this picture again. You can drag a photo right up in there and then put it where you would like to put it and then just make it whatever size you want to make it. That obviously it looks terrible in there but it, just the idea um, you can see where I'm going with this. So anyway, I don't care for this much. Um, so if you want to start over, you can always go to the Cell tab and hit Clear Layout. Okay, so I'm just going to build another one and just show you again what we're going to do. So we're going to bring a photo in and we're just going to start um, designing on our page how we want our layout to look. Um, and I'm just going to do mine right now by dragging all of these different images in. And it's almost like working um, on a puzzle, just starting to put them in where you like them um, and go from there. Now, there is one thing that I don't like about this program. And what it is, is that if I wanted to shift this image down just a little bit, I cannot use the arrow keys to move it. I have to use my mouse. And so there is a place over in the side where you can snap the images. Um, here it is right here, grid snap. It's snapping to cells. So if I wanted to line this up with this image here, it's easier to line up things side by side if you're doing snap by cells. But if I want to add the distance between here and here, there's really not a cell to snap to. So I might turn that off 
then I can go and put my picture in a little bit easier. All right, so now I'm going to space these apart so that now that they're kind of a free flow here, they're not trying to snap to anything, um, and just kind of eyeball that. Um, perhaps maybe to fill in some of this space, I might make this middle one a square. So you can change the shape of them like that. Also, if you have an image inside and you want to move it, you cannot um, crop it or make it larger. But if you hit the control key, your cursor will turn into a hand and you can move the image side by side or up and down if there's room. So that is how you do that. And then um, I think I'll just take this image. I can hit the alt key and just pull and it recreates that same exact box. So now I don't have to resize it. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to scoot these over, just kind of get a little bit of my layout working out here. And then I'll add another photo um, to take that one's place. There you go. Okay, so now let's say that we want to change the background color. So you're going to go over to your sidebar again, and you'll see Page Background Color. Just turn that on, and then you can hit the color swatch, and you can go pick what color you would like your background to be. And then if you want to have a little border around your image, normally these are turned off, but you would click photo border and then you can change the width of it. Obviously these are black, so um, let's go change the color of our photo border to maybe a gray color. It's in there ever so slightly. You can see it with and without. We can change the size of it. There you go. Now you can see it. Okay, that's the inner stroke. Um, photo border actually shows up better when you're using white. It would show you a little bit extra on the side. So anyway, we'll just say that that's, um, we don't want that on there. We'll just leave it like this. Um, and we're almost ready to go to um, file so we can add our um, identity plate which basically can be your logo so if we hit identity plate Lightroom is sort of what's in there but you can change that by hitting this down button and you can go into edit and you can write whatever you would like so let's say I want to do copyright so I'm going to hit alt uh, let me think if I remember it. Uh, 069. Nope, that's not right. Alt 169. Nope. All right, let's forget that because I can't remember it right now. But I will put Jody Minier 2015. I can change the text um, font. I can change the size, you know, anything that I want to do in here. Um, and just hit OK. So now we have that down there at the side at the bottom. You can pick it up and move it and place it anywhere that you want on your screen. Okay, so whoops. Sorry about that. Let's hit undo, control Z. I'm gonna grab that again. I'm gonna put that back down here. Now what's also nice is you can actually put your um, logo in here. So again, go to this little corner drop down, um, go to edit. And up at the top, you'll notice it says use a graphical identity plate. You would just merely click on that. Then you would go locate your logo and place it right into this box. So then when you go in here, um, it, your logo will show up in there and you'll have your logo. All right. That's it. Um, so the next thing you would want to do is either print a file when you do this, it will save this as a JPEG into any file that you want um, in your um, web in your folders, or you can create a new template. So to create a template, what I do is create a new preset by hitting this plus button, and then I'm going to give it a name. So I know this one is a um, 12 by 8. I have two 
verticals and I have two horizontals and I have one square and hit create and then it's going to show up over here you can see all of the different templates that I have made and that's all there is to it. I hope you found out something um, new today and I'd love to see any uh, posts that you make using this tutorial. Have a great day.